Both AMD and NVIDIA have made two recent huge announcements to their upscaling technologies, which in the case of FSR3, we'll go over this first, and then later on in the video, we'll talk about DLSS 3.5. However, the AMD announcement is really huge because it's apparently going to bring frame generation to all GPUs, whether you're on an NVIDIA card or an AMD card or an Intel card, though we'll talk about more about the supported and recommended list a bit later because it is ambiguous and I do just put this down to marketing teams not knowing how to really market to gamers. But what we've got right here is a technology that's going to be using temporal upscaling. Now, temporal upscaling, when it's fine-tuned, can work really well in giving you a huge FPS up boost, but at the cost of not really degrading image quality a whole lot, at least not to a real discernible difference. And the best example I am going to pull up for you guys with temporal upscaling that at least is not based on machine learning, which is what DLSS is all about. If you want to think of how DLSS works, just change the D to M and then call it machine learning super sampling because that's essentially what DLSS 2 and 3 and also 3.5 is going to be. However, when we look at Epic's game Fortnite here, they've got an implementation called TSR, which is Temporal Super Resolution. Now, this is related to the Unreal Engine 5, and it does, in my opinion, a phenomenal job of upscaling. In this case, we've got 66% base render resolution upscaled to 4K, and we're using the TSR medium setting here. And in my opinion, it actually looks better than DLSS 2 in this title, whilst giving over 40% uplift in frames. And even comparing it to the native, it's a very desirable look. Now, Epic's TSR or Unreal Engine 5's TSR, whichever way you want to slice it, is unique to the Unreal Engine 5. However, two of the titles coming out very soon are both on Unreal Engine 5. That is Immortals of Avian as well as Forspoken. Now, both these titles are already released. It's just that they're going to be the first two games to take advantage of FSR 3. Though, actually, the more I dig deeper into this subject, the more fascinated I am. So let's get into it right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So from my research here, it looks like AMD has a really good relationship with Epic Games. And in fact, they've worked closely with Epic Games on numerous projects. So if I take this right, if AMD can really extract the most out of, say, the TSR formula and integrate that into FSR 3, this, in my opinion, could bring a really good upscaling solution to the masses, providing the game is on Unreal Engine 5. As my personal experience with FSR 2 is that I actually haven't really turned it on in any games, and I've been gaming on AMD GPUs in my spare time here just to get a real good update of how far AMD's come in the last few years with their drivers, and in the RX 7600 review that I did, for example, I was actually quite impressed, especially if you want a game on AMD GPUs. I think their driver set in its current form is really solid for gamers. However, there, of course, are some caveats if you are into content creation, which I'll put the link to another video up here if you want to see that. But back to the upscaling technology. Here is where with FSR1, there was a technology called spatula upscaling, which essentially uses the last frame and then just upscales it and applies algorithms. In this case, I just thought FSR1 was more a glorified sharpening filter. Then we go to FSR2, which integrated temporal upscaling, which is really important because it not just uses the most recent frame, but it uses various frames to accurately upscale the image and give you the best quality output at the cost of hopefully not so much a degradation in quality. And although FSR2 is a temporal upscaler, I feel when we dig deeper into the subject, the more I research, it's human-made algorithms. In other words, I feel like it's more of a preset, much like FSR1 was, and it's not giving you a dynamic-based upscaler as the likes of TSR, or in the case of machine learning with NVIDIA's DLSS, would. And so I feel like DLSS2 was far superior to FSR2. That was my personal opinion. But hopefully with FSR3, AMD works closely with the Unreal Engine 5 and essentially integrates TSR and on top of that uses frame generation. And this will actually give a really nice boost in FPS without such a degradation in visual quality. But also looking closer at the 12 games that are going to support FSR 3 initially, most of those are actually either Unreal Engine 5 or Unreal Engine 4. And Unreal Engine 4 actually has its own built-in upscaler too, which is TUAA, which is Temporal Upscaling Anti-Aliasing. 
and that does a really good job but i feel like the tsr implementation in unreal engine 5 is actually extremely impressive don't believe me you can download fortnite for free and just jump into creative mode and test it out for yourself it really is a good upscaling technology that i hope amd can leverage in relation to fsr3 now before we go on with this next part i will say this is a lot of speculation from me personally i'm just analyzing things and then relaying what i'm seeing and what the research i'm doing into what i hope fsr3 will be and the realistic expectations that one would come to get out of this and, and i'm trying to push away all the hype and trying to get aside all the nick tech meme videos that people send me to laugh at and i'm trying to give you guys an honest, realistic expectation here. And so, and so what I feel with FSR 3 is it's actually going to truly be a combination of FSR 2 in games that aren't using the Unreal Engine TSR or TUAA implementation. But then when it comes to Unreal Engine 4 and 5, they're going to use those TUAA and TSR implementations to really make FSR 3 shine like no other. However, the reason for speculation here is the clue that it'll support all DX11 and DX12 titles. Now, DX11 and DX12 are the only options available in Fortnite, which is based on Unreal Engine 5. So if we're looking at Fortnite as an example, this relates perfectly to that DX11 and DX12 implementation of all titles working with FSR3 that AMD promised. So in a nutshell, the upscaling component on FSR3 could be extremely promising, and I'm actually really excited about this, especially versus FSR2 and 1. However, it's time to move on to the frame generation component of this whole technology that's going to be introduced. Essentially, how frame generation works, at least in the implementation of FSR3, is it's going to be grabbing pre-rendered frames, so there will be a input latency that's inherent to frame generation, that just cannot be avoided because it's getting, instead of just having one pre-rendered frame in the queue, it's getting now two loaded frames and then generating a frame in between. So regardless, there will have to be an increase in input latency and AMD is gonna try and mitigate this from their anti-lag features, at least on the AMD side. And then if also if you've got an RX 7000 series card, they're bringing in anti-lag plus, which will be also a new feature being introduced. However, that being said, you've got here two frames, or instance, if you've got three frames, the more frames, the better. However, we look at the recommendations from AMD, they're recommending 60 FPS or higher, because for instance, if you are at 60 FPS and then you're delaying one frame even in that process, that's a delay of 17 milliseconds because you've got to stop that frame. Then you also on top of that, got to generate the frame. So that could be even more delay introduced. So having 120 FPS, this input delay goes down by half. So it's better to have more frames to begin with as to not have a higher perceivable input lag when you're using this technology. The frame generation itself, as people have critiqued with both Nvidia and now AMD, is it's nothing essentially new. It's been out in TVs for a very long time, and whether you like it or not, and the input delay it introduces, is going to be up to you to decide for yourself. Though, if we look at the notes here on the supported list of GPUs and also the recommended list, here's where it gets really ambiguous for me personally because they're saying that it'll work on all AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, but then they're saying it's only supported on NVIDIA RTX 20 series and higher, and then it's only supported on RX 5700 and higher. And now from what I gather and what I research, people are saying, well, that's just what it's supported on. AMD's not going to care if it doesn't work on a GPU outside that supported list. But then again, why would they support NVIDIA cards? They're not going to care about NVIDIA cards too because that's not their problem when it comes to making sure something works properly. So my confusion here comes from just leave the supported portion out and just leave a recommendation here because if we go below that, they're going to say the upscaling portion of FSR3 is not going to work properly on anything under an RX 590. So I know a lot of people have RX 580s and 570s, for example. They're probably going to be left scratching their heads going, am I going to be able to take advantage of FSR 3 or not? And the answer is yes. I believe you should have the options to turn on FSR 3 and both the frame generation portion of that. It's just that AMD's not going to care if there's a problem and you're not on that list. But I would like AMD to update this with much better clarification because it is extremely confusing. 
So FSR 3, I'm really looking forward to this one and hopefully the open standard that AMD is implementing here can be adopted and improved, especially outside of Unreal Engine 4 and 5 games. However, let's move on now to DLSS 3.5, where NVIDIA have recently came out with their ray reconstruction technology. And if you thought AMD was ambiguous, well, NVIDIA is being a little bit ambiguous too, so we'll get this out of the way. They've made this graph appear so that you, all NVIDIA RTX cards will get 3.5, but then it feels like the frame generation portion is then unlocked on 20 and 30 series cards, which is not the case. You will not get frame generation with 3.5 on 20 and 30 series cards. Frame generation is exclusive to RTX 40 series cards, in this case a 4070 or a 4060, and it won't be available on say a 3070 or a 2060. So there's that ambiguity there, and I had to actually clarify that with NVIDIA themselves because the graph kind of made it feel like you were getting frame gen on the older cards, but you aren't. But there is a lot of good here, and that is they're essentially going to be improving the ray tracing and making it more efficient. So it's going to be knocking out things like shimmering, and also it's going to have a denoise filter that's going to work better than it does in the past. So essentially what it's doing here is it's reconstructing what ray tracing is already available, and it's doing so with the machine learning portion of the RTX GPUs. Now, the best thing about DLSS 3.5 is it hopefully should look even better than just having native ray tracing on, but also give you an FPS uplift, which is gonna be the best thing for those who want to turn on ray tracing in games that support it. So DLSS 3.5 from NVIDIA, just like FSR 3 from AMD is slated to come out very soon. I look forward to giving you guys some tests. And for me personally, when both these technologies come out, I'll just make a video for you guys talking about my thoughts and opinions and my experience with it all, rather than give a side by side by side by side by side comparison, breaking down each frame and looking for certain little minor nuances. I'd rather just tell you the overall experience and is it worth turning on or leaving off? Because a lot of games I don't have any any upscaling turned on, I turn a lot of the extra fancy features off because they hit my FPS way too hard. But the final thing I'm going to go over here is DLAA, and that's NVIDIA's anti-aliasing technology. In Baldur's Gate 3, for example, this was working extremely well. It looked gorgeous, and I was actually surprised because every time I see SMAA, I turn that on, but DLAA looked way better in Baldur's Gate 3 than SMAA did. And it was the reason why I didn't use DLSS in Baldur's Gate 3 as well, because DLA did a good job. Now, the best news here for AMD is they're bringing out their own version of this called NAA. So besides FSR 3, I actually am really looking forward to NAA. But the problem here is, is that you can't have, for instance, DLSS 2 and DLAA on at the same time, at least not in Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm going to assume that you can't have FSR 3 and NAA on at the same time because they're both anti-aliasing technologies and you're unfortunately going to have to choose one or the other. So closing off today's video, do let us know in the comments section below which of these technologies are you looking forward to the most and why. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. But also one thing I'll say is I didn't see in the AMD notes the ability to just turn on frame generation outside of the upscaling. It, I believe they marketed it as, okay, you've got to turn on upscaling and then you can turn on frame generation, which in the case of DLSS 3, for example, I know you can turn this on separately, at least in a select few games, and you can just get the frame generation without having to use any upscaling. And I actually did this when I was playing Diablo 3, for example, and it was quite a good experience. So coming out of this video, I'm actually not sure if that's going to be an option available for FSR 3. Only time will tell. Though again, do let us know those thoughts and opinions, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Average Dude MI3FL. And they asked the 7800 XT, or do you pick up a 6800 XT used or on resale? That is the question, and that's a fantastic question. When I do the RX 7800 XT review, I'll actually answer that in that review directly because I think that's gonna be a question on a lot of people's minds. Do I just go get the card that's already out there? RDNA 2, 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's already a really good price, or do I buy this at 500 bucks? I think it's going to actually be a very good question. Look forward to answering that one and hopefully that answers the question of the upcoming question for you. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops and I'll see you next time.
Peace out for now. Bye.